this is Chavi Bhalotia, Assistant Professor, Biani Group of Colleges. Today I am going to deliver a lecture about formation of extra embryonic membranes on the behalf of GuruKPU.com. So friends, let's all start. What are extra embryonic membranes? Why do we study about them? And how are they formed? These are precisely the topics we are going to cover with this lecture. So let's start. So what are extra embryonic membranes? Extra embryonic membranes are the membranes which are formed around the embryo. These are not the part of embryo but are developed around the embryo for its protection and better functioning. So why are these formed? So as I have answer, answered my question already that these, are form, these membranes are formed to protect the embryo and its better functioning. But the main function of these membranes is to provide a atmosphere, a specific kind of atmosphere around the embryo for its proper development and care. And secondly, these, these membranes have specific functions which are related to the specific type of needs which are required by the embryo. So we will start mainly with the extra embryonic membrane that is the yolk sac. So the yolk sac as we can infer from the name itself is formed around the yolk. This is the stage of egg where the embryo has start started to develop a tail fold. Here we have this part of the embryo, this part of the egg is yolk. Now we are trying to develop a sac around it. So what type of sac or what type of sac we need for this embryo to develop properly? The sac or the layer should be permeable to the inside and to the outside so that the exchange can take place. We need to have a membrane which can provide a permeability which is specific for the embryo for its development. The yolk must have, the yolk must be transferred to this embryo for its proper development. If the yolk won't be transferred then this yolk is useless. Thus the yolk sac should have the ability to absorb or transfer the yolk to the embryo. These are the properties we will require in the yolk sac. So how will the yolk sac be developed? As we have studied many times and as we already know that the yolk sac is developed from the splanchnopleure of the embryo or the area opaca of the embryo to be specific. There are two areas in the chick, one is area opaca and the other is area pellucida. Area opaca is the region where all the development of the embryo is occurring and area vitalina is the area where the development is not so fast or where the cell density is a little low. That's why it is allowing the light to pass through it. So area opaca has all the developmental properties. Here we have the yolk sac which will be developed from the splanchnopleure of the area opaca. Now what is splanchnopleure? Splanchnopleure is basically the combination of endoderm and the mesoderm of the area opaca. So where is the endoderm and where is the mesoderm? This layer we, which we have represented with the dotted line is the mesoderm and this is the endoderm of the embryo which is starting to develop right now. So these two will form the splanchnopleure. This splanchnopleure will give rise to the yolk sac. This yolk sac has primary function of providing the embryo with nutrition and has the function to reabsorb this content of yolk from the yolk itself. This yolk sac will be a transferring membrane or you can say the absorbing membrane which will provide the nutrition to the embryo for the time it needs. So the yolk sac has this ability to absorb all the nutrients which are present in the yolk and it transfers it to the embryo. Second thing which we need from the yolk sac is continuity. We can say that the yolk is distributed but what here the embryo is present but this part of yolk cannot be absorbed by this embryo because it is too far away. So we need a sac or a membrane which we will cover the whole yolk and provide the embryo with the nutrition from this part of the yolk as well. So thus the yolk sac is developed from the splanchnopleure which is basically the mesoderm and endoderm of the area opaca. Both of them combine and give rise to this layer or this sac or this membrane which provides nutrition to the embryo. This layer is continuous and is permeable because it has to transfer the nutrients to the embryo. So friends that's 
all about it and also there are various other layers in this uh, egg which are providing it protection and which are having their specific functions which we will discuss later but the first sac or first membrane to be formed is yolk sac because without nutrition anything else cannot occur friends that's all for today thanks for watching please like share comment and subscribe the guru kpo channel thank you and have a nice day